Students, as you know, we are surrounded with a variety of organisms around us. Today, we will study the external morphology of some very common organisms. Let me tell you the meaning of morphology first. In biology, morphology means the study of size, shape and external features of an organism. You might have observed that the living organisms are extremely diverse in form, size, structure, function, habitat and behavior. In our today's class, we will study the external morphology of three animals or organisms, the earthworm, the cockroach and the frog. Let's take up these animals one by one. We will start with earthworm. Objective To study the external morphology of earthworm or ferritima postuma. Material required To study the external morphology of earthworm, very few things are required as material. Live or preserved specimens serve as models for observation. So, to study the external morphology of earthworm, we need a sample specimen of Ferritima postuma. Ferritima postuma is an invertebrate that belongs to the phylum Annelida. Look at the screen carefully. The body of earthworm is cylindrical and elongated with tapering ends. The body is marked by circular grooves which give it a segmented appearance. Each external groove on the body corresponds to the internal segmentation. The body is bluntly pointed at both ends as you can see here. Earthworms are universally considered as farmer's friend as they increase the fertility of the soil. The first segment is known as peristomium. It has a crescent shaped opening called the mouth. A small sensory lobe called prostomium projects from its dorsal side. The prostomium helps it in sensing the surroundings. F-shaped chitinous structures called setae are present on the ventral body surface. These setae are used for locomotion. The posterior end of the earthworm bears an anus through which the earthworm excretes the waste material. The length of the body of a mature earthworm is about 150 mm and the breadth is 3 to 5 mm. In a mature earthworm, the 14th, 15th and 16th segments do not show any segmentation and the region is surrounded by a thick and distinct band of glandular tissue. This portion is known as the clitellum. The clitellum divides the body of the worm into 
three regions the pre clitella region the clitella region and the post clitella region apart from the mouth and anus there are several apertures present on an earthworm's body the dorsal pores are minute apertures of the coelomic chambers located at mid dorsally on each intersegmental groove behind the 12th segment except the last nephridiopores are a large number of minute openings of the integumentary nephridia scattered all over the body except the first two segments spermithecal pores these are four pairs of ventrolaterally located apertures these are present in the grooves of 5 and 6 6 and 7 7 and 8 and 8 and 9 segments they are the openings of the spermitheca female genital pore a single median female genital pore lies on the ventral side of the body on the 14th segment male genital pores these are a pair of crescentic apertures located on the 18th segment on the ventral surface of the body genital papillae these are two pairs of genital papillae one pair each on the 17th and 19th segments on the ventral surface of the body these papillae help in copulation mouth as you have already seen it is a crescentic anterior aperture towards the ventral side of peristomium it is covered by the prostomium anus it is a circular aperture situated terminally on the last anal segment so students it was all about the external morphology of an earthworm let's study another specimen now we will learn more about the external morphology of cockroach cockroaches are a large group of omnivorous insects they eat just anything including plants and other insects cockroaches live in warm dark wet places because they need to be near water cockroaches live in sewers and wet decaying areas such as the basements firewood and piles of leaves cockroaches crawl through dirty areas and then walk around our homes tracking in lots of bacteria and germs a cockroach can survive without food for almost a month it can stay alive about 2 weeks without water they are often found in sewers and basements around pipes and drains students you know cockroaches have been around us since the time of dinosaurs let us study its external features objective to study the external morphology of cockroach or periplaneta americana material required to study the external morphology of cockroach 
we need a preserved specimen of periplaneta americana periplaneta americana is one of the several species of cockroaches that is found in our country cockroaches are among the most common household insects which are slightly larger in size than other insects a cockroach is a nocturnal omnivorous animal it feeds on any kind of organic matter a cockroach has a dorso ventrally flattened and compressed body it is covered by a hard chitinous exoskeleton this exoskeleton is in the form of separate plates the dorsal plate is called tergum and the ventral plate is called sternum laterally the plates are joined by pleura the segmented body is divided into three regions the head thorax and abdomen the head is triangular in shape antero posteriorly flattened and hangs downwards the head is a region formed by the fusion of six segments and is covered by very hard exoskeletal plates the head bears a pair of compound eyes a pair of antennae and a mouth terminally the opening of the mouth is surrounded by a group of appendages collectively known as mouth parts these mouth parts include a labrum a pair of mandibles two pairs of maxillae and a hypopharynx which acts like a tongue the thorax is formed by three independent segments prothorax mesothorax and metathorax each thoracic segment bears a pair of walking legs on the ventral side dorsally the mesothorax and the metathorax bear a pair of wings each the anterior pair of wings called the four wings are leathery thick brown and opaque basically these wings are used to provide a cover to the second pair of wings the second pair of wings lies underneath the first pair and are called the hind wings these are used by a cockroach for flight the abdomen consists of 10 segments in male cockroach the eighth tergum is overlapped by the seventh tergum the 10th tergum is bilobed and below it there is a pair of short filaments called anal sulci ventrally the 9th sternum is visible it bears a pair of anal styles the genital aperture is found between the 9th and 10th sterna anus is found beneath the 10th tergum a female cockroach also possesses the same features 
except that there are certain differences. Let us list out the differences between a male and a female cockroach. In male cockroach, abdomen is long and narrow. But in female cockroach, abdomen is comparatively short and broad. Male cockroach's wings reach beyond the tip of abdomen, whereas female cockroach's hind wings reach up to the tip of the abdomen. In male cockroach, seventh segment covers only the eighth segment of the abdomen. On the other hand, in female cockroach, seventh segment of the abdomen covers both eighth and ninth segment. All the nine segments are visible in male cockroach, but in female cockroach, only the first seven abdominal segments are visible. There is no brood pouch in male cockroach. On the other hand, seventh, eighth and ninth abdominal segments form a brood pouch in female cockroach. In male cockroach, ninth abdominal segment bears a pair of anal styles. But in female cockroach, anal styles are absent. Students, after studying the morphology of cockroach, our next organism whose morphology we are going to study is frog. Rana tigrina is the common name of Indian frog. Frogs are amphibians and are characterized by short body, webbed digits, protruding eyes and the absence of a tail. While frog species can use a variety of modes of locomotion, they are generally recognized as exceptional jumpers. A frog has greenish spots and dark lines on its skin, which is kept wet and slimy due to the secretion of glands. Its ventral side is yellowish white in color. Certain frogs change color between night and day. They do so because light and moisture stimulate the pigment cells and cause them to expand or contract. Almost all frogs are able to absorb oxygen directly through the skin. They primarily live on the ground, in water, in trees or in the burrows. The body of a frog consists of a head, trunk and limbs. The head is directly joined to the trunk. Therefore, a frog cannot move its head from side to side. A frog's head is triangular and flattened with a wide mouth on the anterior side. On the dorsal side of the head are present a pair of external nostrils. Two bulging eyes are present which are covered with immovable eyelids along with the transparent nictitating membrane which can spread over the eye for its protection. Behind each eye on the ventrolateral side of the head a circular pit covered by tympanic membrane exists. Let us observe all these features. Objective Objective of this experiment is to study the external morphology of frog or rana tigrina. Material required to study the external morphology of frog we need a preserved specimens of rana tigrina. Now, look at the screen carefully. The skin of Rana tigrina is rough and slimy. 
the dorsal body surface is usually olive green in color the ventral surface is lighter than the dorsal side and is somewhat whitish body is bilaterally symmetrical comprising of head and trunk neck is absent folded limbs are present there is no tail in adult frog the head is semicircular in shape anteriorly the head is produced into a snout mouth is located at the terminal end of head and is bounded by upper and lower jaws on the dorsal side of the snout there is a pair of opening called external nostrils two prominent eyes are situated behind the nostril each eye has a well developed thick and immovable upper eyelid and poorly developed lower eyelid a nictitating membrane or third eyelid is attached to the lower eyelid it is a transparent membrane that stretches across the eye to clean the cornea behind the eyes there is a circular membrane representing the drum of the ear or the tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane covers the cavity of the middle ear on the outside it is a thin strong elastic membrane which captures acoustic vibrations in case of male there are two vocal sacs at the base of jaws these are pouches of skin opening on the floor of the mouth they function in amplifying the croaking sound produced by male frogs the trunk is cylindrical in shape at the posterior end of the trunk there is a small aperture called the cloacal aperture for releasing feces urine and gametes the trunk bears a pair of fore limbs and a pair of hind limbs the hind limbs are much longer and more powerful than the fore limbs the fore limbs consist of an upper arm forearm and hand in the case of male a cushion like pad develops on the index finger during breeding season each hind limb is z shaped and consists of three parts upper thigh a middle shank and a foot the foot in turn is divided into three parts namely an ankle an instep and the toes in between toes there is a membranous fold of skin forming a web between the toes if we talk about sexual dimorphism in frog the male is smaller in size the ventral surface of trunk is smooth in female but rough in male the male has two vocal sacs located near the base of the jaws the males have a nuptial pad in the index finger students sexual dimorphism is a phenomenon in which two sexes are morphologically different so this was about 
the specimens we observed today. We learnt external features of cockroach, earthworm and frog. Let's revise the same by carrying out a question answer session. My first question is, why do you see earthworms on the soil surface after the rains? And the answer is, we see earthworms on the soil surface after the rains because their burrows get filled with water. Since worms breathe through their skin, the skin must stay wet in order for the oxygen to pass through it. After rain or during high humidity, earthworms are able to keep their skin moist. So it is safe time for worms to move around without dehydrating. The next question is, what do earthworms eat? The answer is, earthworms eat soil along with the organic matter present in it. Their nutrition comes from things in soil such as decaying roots and leaves. They also like to eat living organisms like protozoans, bacteria, fungi in soil. Worms also feed on the decomposing remains of other animals. The next question is, where is Periplaneta Americana found? The answer is, Periplaneta Americana is found in dark and damp places. They are generally seen in kitchens, restaurants, underground drains, etc. The next question is, how do male and female cockroaches differ from each other? And the answer is, male cockroaches have an additional set of appendages called styles on their abdomens. The presence of styles is the easiest way to distinguish male from a female cockroach. The female cockroach has short and broad abdomen with no anal style. The next question is, how do cockroaches spread infection? The answer is, cockroaches crawl through dirty areas and then walk around our homes, tracking in lots of bacteria and germs. In this way, they spread infection. The next question is, what makes cockroaches to survive in all odd living conditions? The answer is the presence of chitinous exoskeleton and omnivorous feeding habit helps the cockroaches to survive in all odd conditions. The next question is, is there any sexual dimorphism in frog also? The answer to this is, if we talk about sexual dimorphism in frog, the male is smaller in size. The ventral surface of trunk is smooth in female but rough in male. The male has two vocal sacs located near the ankle of jaws. The males have a nuptial pad in the index finger. The next question is discuss mouth parts of a cockroach. The answer to this is the mouth parts of a cockroach include a labrum, a pair of mandibles, two pairs of maxilla and a hypopharynx which acts like a tongue. The next question is, where is the tympanic membrane present in a frog? The answer to this is, the tympanic membrane covers the cavity of the middle air on the outside. It is a thin, strong, elastic membrane connected to the inner air on one side to capture acoustic vibrations. Hope I have made a successful attempt in demonstrating external features of three animals, cockroach, earthworm and frog. I hope you enjoyed today's class. Hope to see you next time with a new experiment.